been doing a series on uh, recognizing a healthy marriage, and I've chosen for today's message to have a couple of specific things about it. Number one is to follow that old saying, when you do, whenever you speak, is the um, acronym KISS, keep it simple, stupid. So I'm gonna try to keep it simple. And number two is I really wanna be very practical today because I wanna talk to you today about communication. One of the most um, powerful, difficult struggles in a relationship, any relationship, is communication. And I want to give you seven practical things to help you in terms of your communication. Because so often we're on different wavelengths. Men and women think different. We don't often see things in the same way. And so today I want to focus on that. Some of you remember or know the cartoon in the paper, Andy Cap. Andy's walking away from his wife whistling. His wife is in curlers behind him yelling, what's the point of me being on speaking terms when you're not on listening terms? Well, there are some relationships like that. And so today I want to focus on that because Proverbs 15, Proverbs, a book of sayings that are so teaching and helpful, Verse 2 says, when wise people speak, they make knowledge attractive. So, want us to learn how to speak to each other. So, here's the seven things. Number one, choose the right time. And these are inside your program if you want to write some notes along with these. Choose the right time to talk. Ecclesiastes 8.6, there is a right time and a right way to do everything. Timing is so important in communication. I remember I've stood in front of churches before with what I thought was one of my best sermons, and that church was in such a completely different place, it just fell flat as a pancake. And you probably have had times in relationships where you went to talk to somebody, and just because you started the time you did, there were problems. Not what you were saying, but what was going on. Choose the right time. It's not best to bring up something big just as you're climbing into bed. You know, studies have been done by Columbia University that found that most violent arguments in marriages occur right before mealtimes, when your blood sugar is low and your frustration is high. Bad timing equals fireworks. And so one of the best things to do is just to say, we need to talk about something serious in the next hour, by the end of the day, before the weekend's over, don't just walk up and blast somebody. Pick the time and let them know we need to talk. Number two, plan the presentation. Plan the presentation. Proverbs 16, 23. Intelligent people think before they speak. What they say is more persuasive. Intelligent people think before they speak. Anybody who leads people to tell you one of the things that they do before they go into any kind of meeting is to think about, okay, with what I'm going to say tonight or what we're going to try to do in this meeting, what is it that is going to be the pros and the cons? Where am I going to find disagreements? Where are the questions that I need to be ready to answer? To plan out what it's going to be like. Usually we get so angry or so upset, we just blast. It doesn't do anybody any good. So think about if you're going to talk to your spouse about something, what is it I need to think about in terms of this? How do I present this in a way that is not good? And how do I present it in a way that's positive? And there are two ways to do that. Number one is to plan your introduction, and number two is plan your illustration. You know, don't become the bad news bearer of your family. Here are some bad introductions. This place is a pigsty and you're the head pig. This place is so filthy, the roaches are begging for raid. Or, my mother thinks you're a tightwad. Or, why don't you treat me like he treats his wife? Or, am I the only adult in this family? Or, do you think we could make love sometime before Christmas? Or, my favorite... I know you've forgotten their names, but let me reintroduce your children to you. 
not good ways of beginning a conversation. Gary Smalley in the book, The Language of Love, talks about good introductions into conversations. How can you do that? How can you plan so that your introduction is good, but also your illustrations? Don't just blame or scream or criticize. How can you share in things that are positive? Number three, begin with his or her needs. Ephesians 4.29, speak only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Speak only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs. You hear that? Need and benefit. What is it the person needs as you're talking to them? What's the contact points? What's the place that brings you together to talk? For example, coming together and saying something like, you know, I need to talk to you because you're doing everything wrong in this marriage isn't a good way to start off or to look at that person's needs. But to start off with something like, you know, the day we got married was the happiest day of my life. And there are things about you that make my life so much better but there's something I feel like we need to talk about so that our marriage can be even better. You hear the difference? And that's not just blowing smoke, that is taking things in a positive way, dealing with them. Before you bring something up, how will that person respond to it? You know, God gave you at the base of your brain something that is called RS, RAS, Reticular Activating System. And it is a filter in which you take information in to understand. And if that thing was wide open, you would go crazy because you'd be aware of everything. But you respond to basically three types of information. The first one is things that threaten you. Second is three things that you value. And third, things that are unique. So if you want to get the attention of somebody or your spouse, you can threaten them. But that's not what a loving relationship does. You can be unique. You could dye your hair purple, dress up like a clown. But again, that's not very legitimate in conversation and communication. So start with, what is it that they value? Do they value you? Do they value the relationship? Do they value, what is it they value? Communication flows best when you show interest in the other person their hurts, their needs, their goals, their interests. Number four, listen first. Listen first. How many times have you been in a conversation with somebody that they were so ready to answer before you finished, they showed they didn't hear a word that you said. They went completely in a different direction because it's what they were thinking. They weren't listening. Proverbs 18, 13, listen before you answer. If you don't, you're being stupid and insulting. So you want to be stupid and insulting, don't listen. We need to learn how to listen better because the problem is we start making assumptions of what the person is going to say. And the longer you're married, the more assumptions that usually develop. James 1.19, be quick to listen and slow to speak. Or that old saying of God gave you two ears and one mouth for a particular reason, and you use, need to use them appropriately. But studies have shown you and I hear 20% of everything that is said to us. That's just words to comfort a minister, isn't it, in their sermon. 